Hey guys, Claire here, and in today's video, we're going to talk about all things Sussex related. Now, people are still reacting from the coronation festivities, and of course, we saw Megan out and about with her longtime friends hiking in California. Now, <laughs> Megan Kelly, who is essentially a career troll, um, claimed that the photos were staged only to be corrected by the actual photographer who took the photos. Now, while it's kind of creepy to think that he literally just stalks around Montecito trying to get photos of Harry and Meghan, I found it really funny that he called her out on her BS. Also, I don't know if you guys know this, but I read that uh, paparazzi can make about half a million dollars for a sighting of Harry or Meghan. So, good lord, that's a lot of money. That's insane. Anyway, of course, when Meghan is seen, whatever she's wearing tends to sell out, and this time was no different. The Meghan effect is still in order because her, I believe it was a J. Crew jacket, and her morale hiking boots both sold out <laughs> and you have celebrities like Chrissy Teigen who was trying to find out well, what were the leggings that she wore and there were articles talking about um, well, the Megan effect talking about how the things that she tends to wear over the years almost always sell out and the fashion brand power um, behind her and it was a really interesting read I'll see if I can add it on to the screen or in the link below for you guys to check it out if you're interested now there are also articles talking about um, how upset they are and how upset Megan fans are for not being able to see her you know dressed to the nines for the coronation and yeah I always love to see Megan but <laughs> As a Megan Stan who sees the stress that she goes through whenever she's in that environment, I'm okay with not seeing her in there dressed up for a coronation. To me, yeah, I love to see her, but for her being over there, it's definitely not worth it. She has her award shows coming up. We're going to get to see her plenty. Now, since Katy Perry performed at the coronation, a lot of people were bringing up a video of her seemingly shading Megan, saying that her dress needed to be fitted. And boy, oh boy, people were going in on Katy Perry, just really zooming in on the fit that she wore for the coronation and saying, you know, she should take her own advice because <laughs> that custom piece was not well done and i'm surprised because it is i can't remember the name of the fashion house but it's one that i generally love the clothing but for some reason the fit of the items that she wore particularly to the church part of the ceremony was just so ill-fitted but then again i mean when it comes to katy perry I like her music, but I don't pay attention to her personal life, nor do I think of her as someone who is equipped to give advice when it comes to fashion, because <laughs> if we really look at the looks that she wears over the years, it's just a hot mess of busy patterns and bright colors. It's just like she had toddlers pick out her outfits for the day. So, you know. <laughs> I, I'm not particularly invested or care about Katy Perry giving anybody fitting or fashion advice. Also, on that note, there are so many articles talking about the Coronation concert and how much of a dud that it was. I didn't watch it, so I don't know. If you guys watched it, let me know. Did you like it? I mean, they were going in on both Katy Perry and Lionel Richie. A lot of them said that it was just kind of lackluster and boring. I don't know. 
apart from that, it was so interesting to see the people of the Rivaldi and Kaboom project that Archwell did in um, remembrance of the lives lost at the Uvalde shooting in Texas, talk about their experiences, talk about the playground that was built, and the people really talking about meeting Megan and how much they like her. And again, this is just another example of people who have actually spent time with her, <laughs> apart from the vipers, aides, and courtiers of the palace and Harry's um, family. <laughs> Any of the people who meet her and have worked with her all have great things to say. And that woman talking about meeting Megan and how that entire playground came to fruition was not the only person this week talking about how nice Megan was. There is someone who um, met her or observed her as she entered into a restaurant with her friends and she shared her story on TikTok. So in honor of the King's coronation, let's do a Royal Edition story time. And today we're gonna to talk about Meghan Markle. I know that people have very strong opinions about Meghan Markle. All I'm gonna tell you is what my personal experience was with her as someone who actually met her and spent a tiny bit of time with her. So this is when she was already married, pregnant, and she came into a restaurant that I was working in. This is a celebrity driven restaurant. She was coming in to have dinner with her friends. So this was not a work event, there was no press, there was no red carpet, there was no nothing. It was just like you and me going out to dinner and having dinner with our friends, no different. They did go into the private dining room, which was at the back of the restaurant, so they did have to walk through the restaurant to get to the PDR. So yes, did everybody saw her, but that's where the PDR was, you had no choice. Once they were all in the PDR, the doors were closed. Directly outside the PDR was a a la carte dining section. And in that section was her security detail because you could see directly into the private dining room so you could see who was going in and out. And also people from the restaurant group and other people we knew we could sit back there and trust because they didn't give a shit Meghan Markle was here. I was originally supposed to be the main server, but the firm, I think, can't confirm that, but I think it was the firm. They wanted me to sign an NDA. I refused. And so I became the second, which means that I would just go into the room to help assist, serve, clear, if drinks need to be dropped off, wine poured, whatever. Every time I was in the room, everything that I heard, saw, experienced firsthand, she is lovely, respectful, kind, was just having dinner with her friends. That's it, like any one of us. It's not newsworthy at all. I guess it's newsworthy because people have this preconceived notion about her. Nothing that I experienced was like that with her. She was great, always please and thank you, always eye contact, always engaging, having a really great time with her friends in this private room so she had no excuse to be anything other than herself because she was now in a safe environment. And so I saw, in my opinion, what I feel was the real Megan. She was just alone with her friends. And I was a bit of a fly on the wall and I thought she was fantastic. Um, the night ended, she left, she said goodbye to all of us. I did say to my colleague after, you know, everything was said and done, what did you think of her? Since he was the main person in the room and he spent a significant amount of time in there. He said to me, Krista, I gotta tell you, she's one of the nicest human beings I have ever met in my life. Not celebrity, not civilian, not, doesn't matter totally the nicest human I have ever met in my life. He couldn't stop raging about her. So maybe everybody needs to back off a little bit and give her a little bit of grace because she's really lovely. Now, apart from the coronation, insanity, and Meghan sighting, of course, Prince Harry is back in court. Now, he wasn't there personally or physically, but he enjoyed a win of sorts pretty early on. Now the tabloid in question admitted and apologized for hacking. Now they didn't apologize and admit to um, the large scope of hacking that Harry has claimed, but they apologized, I believe, for like one instance. Now we know where there's smoke, there's fire. And the fact that Harry is refusing to settle lets us know that him and his lawyers believe that they have a very strong case. 
nonetheless, it's interesting that they did actually apologize up front. So that's always a good thing. And not only did they acknowledge it and apologize for it, they kind of threw the royal family under the bus by claiming that, hey, you know, a lot of the nasty stories that were written about you, a lot of the personal things that invaded your privacy came from your family members and their staff, which again is in total alignment of what um, Robert Chopson and Dan Wooten had admitted to before. Okay, just a very quick video because I think we are all forgetting something. The Daily Mirror is on trial right now and they apologized a few days ago and they admitted to unlawful information gathering on Prince Harry. However, they went a step further and just threw the royal family under the bus. They said that Harry should blame his father's aides for intruding upon his privacy rather than journalists. Which like, both things can be true. However, we're already getting stuff from royalists trying to push this under the rug, acting like this isn't as big of a deal as it is. Like, to say that briefing isn't corrupt? There's a huge difference between briefing the press about your own family, about your own life, and actively selling information to make your own self look good. Which is the example that the Daily Mirror cited in court. Harry's sick with a kissing disease they claim came directly from Charles's house. And then they post this crap and lie about it and try and cover it up. Does every celebrity brief the press? Of course they do. But to say there's nothing wrong with this is deliberately sticking your head in the sand or putting your fingers in your ears and going la 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 la. If you like the royal family, that's fine. I like a lot of members of the royal family too. It is corrupt. It needs change. Like you're never, it, I just can't understand. Like this is never going to be sustainable long term. Unless you are in line to the throne. Unless you're one of the media. So did we see this? Did we see that now in the court proceedings, uh, in the phone hacking trial, that the media is now saying, we didn't get these stories from hacking his phone. We got these stories directly from members of the royal family or their households, which is exactly what Harry's been saying all along. Now, are they just repeating what he's saying to get out of the fact that they are hacking his phone? Maybe. Uh, could both things be true, that they are still hacking personal devices and getting stories from insiders? Two things can be true at once. Because keep in mind, this uh, whole trial about the hacking is not just uh, Harry, but it's a lot of other celebrities uh, and well-known people in the UK, including crime victims. But it's very interesting, don't you think? The publisher of British tabloid The Daily Mirror apologised to Prince Harry for unlawful information gathering. The admission emerged in court documents as Prince Harry's celebrity class action kicks off in London. Prince Harry is among a group of 100 celebrities suing Mirror Group, accusing them of accessing private info and phone hacking between 1991 and 2011. And if you've watched my channel for any length of time, if you've seen videos that I've done before, you know that we have added videos throughout um, of different reporters in the UK sort of admitting to that beforehand. And obviously it's so much easier for them to blame anything uncomfortable on racism rather than actually address the fact that much of the negativity towards the couple is coming from within the royal family. The royal family and staff of the royal family are the ones that are very often leaking these stories to the press. So is it normal for, uh, and do you think it's true, that what some of the royal households have been leaking on the other royal households, like Meghan and Harry? Well, without a doubt. I mean, yeah, absolutely. I mean, they can deny it all they like to their blue in the face, but they, there's been an awful lot of leaking from, particularly from Kensington Palace, about how things were um, were developing, and that was a, a palace that both of them were representing. You know, being represented by the same people. The firm got alarmed that this couple were getting bigger than William and Kate, and there was some briefing against them that got completely out of control. And it went very badly for when them. Harry and Meghan became such a popular couple, it put everybody's noses out of joint. The establishment wanted to retain the monarchy as it was, yep. to boost William and Kate, and the media, the Daily Mail and the Telegraph in particular, fed those lines. Well, drip, drip, I, I, drip, don't, drip, I agree drip. with everything until you said the last bit. I think, I think that, that somebody in the palace 
decided to take them yes. down a peg or two, and it went too far. Absolutely. But that's all his. So it's not surprising. Um, also not surprising to see a lot of the mainstream media and tabloids in the UK sort of like not talk about it. You know, Harry and Meghan holding hands. Everybody's got to talk about it. You have like a two page spread. But this very interesting revelation, mum's the word. But we live in an age of social media, so it's good to see a lot of people talking about it and amplifying that topic. Now, Harry is expected to show up to court, and I can't wait. We get to see <laughs> Piers Morgan, you know, running around as usual. Whenever he's challenged, he really doesn't do well. You know, he always rants and raves with his tail tucked between his legs. And uh, the latest video of him trying to deflect um, from Harry calling him out and pursuing this case <laughs> with ferocity was interesting to see. Now, I'm not going to add Piers in this video because I just can't stand the sound of his voice anymore. But it's been really interesting to see a lot of people on various social media forums, kind of the, the comments underneath, which were overwhelmingly very supportive of Harry <laughs> pursuing this and also calling Piers out for what they believe is lying. Remember, this is not Piers' first time that he has been accused of being um, fully involved and in the know about the hacking. Um, while he was, I believe, editor at one of the tabloids years ago. So, yeah. Okay, y'all, so the Brits are big mad. Big mad! Let's run down the statistics. First of all, their country is in the middle of an economic downturn, wages are low, prices are high, and they're deciding to throw a hundred million dollar coronation for a king who was just born into the role. He didn't earn it. Second, the, the king has married his jump off, Camilla Parker Bowles, Windsor, and now she has gone from queen consort to being crowned queen this weekend of the UK and 17 other countries. Personally, I think that's what this shit is really about. Now, Britain, the UK, London, England, are, they're not going through anything other countries aren't going through with, with people can't afford food, uh, gas and to heat their country. Remember when the UK had that uh, energy crisis and then people were freezing to death? Yeah, yeah. That was just last year. Just last year. Uh, then, of course, COVID ravaged their country. And then, of course, let's not forget the racist undertones of the Windsors, how they treated Meghan Markle, how they sold stories to the newspaper to make Brits undermine Harry and Meghan's wedding. Now, my facts may be twisted. I really don't give a shit. I'm just looking at the bigger picture of it all. They big mad. They are big mad and they have every right to be. Millennials are saying, absolutely not. He is not my king. He's not the king of me. And I'm certainly not calling the jump off Queen Camilla. <laughs> now, it's all over my For You page, so I guess it's going to be my content today. I find it quite interesting. I really, really do. They can't possibly think, Charles and Camilla, of course, and William and Kate, for that matter, they can't possibly think that they are loved in that country. They can't possibly think. And then with headlines like, come out this Saturday and swear your allegiance to the new king. Oh yeah, the headlines are crazy. Absolutely insane. Gen Z, they are not having it. Are you, do you understand me? They are blatantly throwing actual rotten eggs at this man. <laughs> now I won't be watching this weekend and I'm sure all the pomp and stance and I, you know what? I might just tune in to hear the boos. I just might tune in. Because you know when they resurface that shit, they're going to edit all that shit out. You know it. 
Karen here. This is why Harry got Meghan out of the country. First of all, I am a British citizen living in the United States who is literally bored now of talking about the monarchy, but Karen's comment deserves a statement. I've had an awful lot of comments asking me what I think about Harry and what I think about William. And here we go. Harry recognised that the Tory press in England were treating his wife, the mixed race uh, wife, in exactly the same way as they treated Diana Spencer. And he knew what happened to Diana Spencer. She met with an accident. And a man in love decided, yeah, I need to get my family out of Dodge. I need, we, we need to get out of here. And they ran away. I have an awful lot of respect for that young man for doing exactly that. Now his elder brother, unfortunately, whether it's because he's the heir and Harry's just the spare, I don't know. But William has been thoroughly indoctrinated into the Sax Coburg clan plan. And if there is a heaven, which I don't believe in, I assume his mum is looking down on William and shaking her head. No, no, no. Harry does the minefield charity support, much in the same way his mum did. Harry is his mum. William is his dad. It is what it is. But I have an awful lot of respect uh, for Prince Harry. I mean, he made some questionable decisions in a fancy dress party and running around a pool table naked. But yeah, young men make stupid decisions. But in terms of what he's done to walk away from millions of pounds and fame and accolades from the British public to protect the woman he loves, I have a lot of respect for him. How many of you did not watch the coronation? I, for one, did not. And I am so happy I didn't um, for a multitude of reasons. Um, I took a couple uh, glances at it through TikTok the next day and a couple articles and yeah, I'm so happy I did. Number one, Diana should have been up there. Diana should have been queen, not Camilla. Camilla was the side piece. She was the mistress. She's the one who broke up this family. She broke up the marriage and she made it harder on the children as they grew up during their primary years, mind you, by the way. So neither one of those children would be happy to see the mistress probably as the queen consort she's no queen of mine that's for sure um and the amount of petty that went into the coronation was mind-boggling uh one was people complaining about harry's suit it was a three-piece suit tailored for him by dior and it was promoting for dior and people were making such critiques about it would have been done by a British company. I think he still would have been criticized for wearing a certain suit anyway. Doesn't matter who the maker was. Um, but that's still pretty petty of the news outlets, the British news outlets to do that. And number two, what they should have been focusing on instead was the difference between Prince Andrew and Prince Harry when it came to non-working royals. Prince Andrew got to wear his royal regatta robes, where Harry didn't, and he luckily at least got to wear his medals, but he wasn't in the same boat as Andrew. Andrew has done criminal activity. His mother bailed him out, but we all still know him as having dealings with Epstein. That's not going to go away anytime soon. And yet, all Harry did was speak his truth, and look what that got him. Two working royals, and yet one's getting more favoritism than the son who's just speaking his truth, where the other one did criminal activity. Hello? Um, and number three was, not even Harry sitting three rows back, mind you, is that they were saying about, oh, Harry left um, before the coronation party and all this other stuff. He had duties to do to his son, and he made a promise to his son, and he made sure that he was back on his birthday. That's what parents do. And at least he did his duty to his father, but also his keeping up with his promises to his own family. And speaking of family, Grandpapa, who says he's such good with the children, nowhere on any royal media, websites for the um, for Kate and William, for uh, Prince King Charles, did they talk about Archie's birthday? 
a lot of stories coming out about Prince Harry yesterday, but I wanted to highlight this one. It's Angela Levin, Camilla's official biographer, and she says, Prince Harry's swift exit proves we've lost him and we'll never get him back. Now, my first reaction when I read that headline was, yeah, no shit. The writing was on the wall before Harry even met Meghan. He's found success outside of the royal family. I don't think he'd ever go back. Angela said she thought that this ceremony would have made him think, what an amazing family with all their faults I've been a part of. And of course, she blames Meghan. She writes, there's no going back for him as long as Meghan is around. But literally in the same article, she says she should have been there for his sake, even if she didn't like it. Like, what do you want? You say you don't want her there, but she should be there. She then writes, I can't see how Harry would have taken that easily. It must have been a very stressful event for him with everyone watching his every move. And why would he want to subject Megan to that? Why? Why? She ends the article saying that when he walked into the Abbey, he looked like he was showing clear signs of stress. This guy? This guy looks stressed. He looks like the only one having a good time. He smiled. He held his head high. He chatted with family members. I also want to say, this is the only story Angela wrote yesterday. Camilla's official biographer only wrote about Harry. People have moved on from Harry, she says, writing an article about Harry on the coronation day. Except that's not what happened. The funds that were transferred in 2020 came from the Endeavor Fund, which Harry founded himself in 2012. Here it is on the Royal Foundation's website, Paul Street. Here is the financial statement for 2020 for the Invictus Games. And by the way, the Royal Foundation is not just William and Kate's, or it did always used to be. It started in 2009 and it was called the Foundation of Prince William and Prince Harry. When Kate and William finally married in 2011, it was changed to the Royal Foundation of the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge and Prince Harry. It would eventually become just the Royal Foundation in 2018 when Meghan married Harry. And by the way, I doubt William would have given him money out of the goodness of his heart when he wasn't even very happy when Harry started the project in 2013. Marino. Do you remember when it was announced that Lionel Richie was going to be the star performer? And I said, no shade on Lionel. I think Lionel is a great musician. However, he was not who they had. It was like literally their last choice. <laughs> a total flop. We tried telling Lionel. We tried. We were like, they're using you. No one wants to perform at this thing. No one. All major current stars that were asked turned them down. And they ask you, and you said yes. And now they're saying you were a flop. When will people learn? That's it. <laughs> I actually did. I for, I forgot to watch the concert. If it, I already know if it aired. I have no idea. I just saw clips of it here, and I thought it was okay. But it's like, yeah, that's Lionel Richie. Duh. What did you think he was going to perform like Harry Styles? <laughs> it's just so silly, you know. And I think I always find it so funny. I say this all the time. When the, the hateful Brits come in my comments and they're like, what does a yank have to say? What is a yank? What is the yank? And I'm like, newsflash, this is from the Daily Mail. This is it right there? Like, they're obsessed with American culture. Hence why the two biggest performers were American. Literally. Did Bette Midler even perform? I know they had said she was. I didn't even see her. But... Yeah, the Yanks and the Brits. You're just going to have to get used to it. So, clearly we're not going anywhere. <laughs> okay, bye! All right. Let's talk about the Aquatsuras in the room. Yes, we are talking shoes because here's the thing. Clothing, especially those outfits worn by the royal women, are rarely just clothing. There are usually intentional messages in the outfits that they are intending to communicate with the public. Intentional. Someone was considering how this would look when the media printed shots of Kate's outfit and how it would beautifully correlate with the colors of the British flag. Same thing, also intentional. Camilla's dress embroidered with the flowers that are emblematic of the four nations that make up the UK, intentional. Which brings us back to these shoes. 
This brand of shoe, especially this slingback style, is a favorite of Meghan Markle's. When she was a working royal, she wore them a lot. So Kate wearing Aquatsura, not once, these are the same pair, but twice, was kind of strange because it was going to invite inevitable comparisons to Meghan Markle. But the real kicker, Rose Hanberry wearing those shoes. What in the single white female is going on? This is intentional. These women have plenty of slingback suede pumps. Why this particular pair? These theories come from Matta. In fact, I wasn't able to stitch her video, but if you go to her page, you will see her theories and they are very good, backed up by evidence, which we love. For Kate, it might've simply been SEO. She knows that people are gonna talk about Megan, so why not just put the comparison right there? Get her name trending along with Megan's. They're gonna talk about her anyway. But with Rose, it's like, you wore these shoes the day after Kate wore them, with all those previous rumors of a rural rift. What are you doing? And again, Matta Fact made an excellent point. Rose is primarily responsible for the running of Houghton Hall, their estate located in the countryside. It is not cheap to run one of these estates. I discussed this in a YouTube video of mine, but David Rock Savage has in the past sold off art to pay for the upkeep of this estate. Remember, a lot of aristocrats are asset rich. So it behooves Rose to get press. I mean, we got brand deals, y'all. I believe that both these women had different reasons for wearing these shoes. I also believe it is very much intentional. The publisher of the Daily Mail has apologized to Prince Harry for using unlawful methods to gather information about his public life. They also said that Prince Harry is entitled to compensation for what they did to him. But here's the problem in my eyes. There is no amount of money that's going to get Prince Harry to the state of mind he was before he was hacked. Imagine living your life knowing that somebody could possibly be listening to your phone conversations with your best friend, your family, your physician, your bank. It's terrifying and as a victim of cyber stalking, it's, it never leaves you. I imagine this is extra hard for Prince Harry because remember his mother was a victim of cyber stalking too and people called her paranoid. And in case you're late to the party, Princess Diana never got an apology for being cyber stalked and she never got an apology for being called paranoid. Uh, Nicholas Soames, who called her paranoid and is friends with Charles and Camilla, did apologize, but Princess Diana was not with us by the time he did apologize. So Harry, I don't think you should accept their apology and I think you should expose everyone who did this to you and your mother. There are so many of us that support you and believe that these people should be held accountable. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, hit that notification bell.